Ladies and gentlemen, the video is flooding in as people have a chance to analyze it. We're analyzing ours, finding similar things. You know, I have a limited crew. They just got back Saturday. We've already posted a lot of videos. This video is from another activist. Clearly police officers breaking people's cameras, trying to stir up trouble. I can't play the audio because there's so much cussing. But these are just two of the three and big, huge cops. They put their biggest cops in to pose as anarchists. And we're going to try to match this up with other video of big, scrapping guys who will throw stuff at police so the police have a pretext to then fire and attack the general crowd. And uh, I remember, pardon me? Yeah, breaking, uh, breaking demonstrators' cameras. Absolutely, that's, that's in the video. We can't play it because there's so much cussing, but look at these cops. I mean, look at these guys. Now, we caught them in Denver last year. Mainstream news, Denver Post headline, police caught attacking their own police. We caught them in Canada at the uh, SPP meeting last year. They were caught, but the BBC admitted it, in England, and they killed a guy, beat him to death. Uh, these guys need to be criminally charged. We need to find out who they are. But it's, I mean, they put these big, giant cops in. Mike Adams, your comment on agent provocateurs. This is a preview of things to come, Alex, and great work on your part and, and the contributors who are sending this in. I can't wait to, to look at this myself. But this is, this is what's going to be happening in more cities across the U.S. And this is a test to see how people react, to see whether they can, they can uh, do this covertly and be exposed. So the fact that you are exposing them is probably going to help save lives down the road because it's going to help suppress that kind of tactic from being used excessively. I mean, they're going to try it anyway. But, but the thing is, we keep people. exposing them, and other people do, and then the Royal Mounted Police admit it, the Denver Police admit it, and no one gets in trouble. That's why Luke yeah. Rodowski was yeah. there, and, and, and Rob Dew were there with others saying, don't be violent, you'll have a couple thousand people, or in this case, a couple hundred, you'll have 15 people led by cops, they'll yell and scream and tell Luke, shut up when he calls out against violence, and then it's cops. I mean, how evil are these police? What we've got to do is get some long-range cameras going from people who are away from the immediate fray and who are not in the fight. Get some long-range cameras going. That happened in Greece this year. In fact, pull up Greek TV and meet uh, agent provocateurs, uniformed police directing regular cops busting out windows at another global meeting to then blame it on the general protesters. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're exactly right. I mean, this this is like a local law enforcement false flag operation, and they're, they're going to keep doing it for as long as they can get away with it. But in the video that, you, that you're seeing right now, Alex, can you can you make out the faces very clearly of those responsible? No, they're wearing masks, but it's big, strapping cops. Uh, I mean, they stick out like a sore thumb. It's always the same. I mean, it's big guys, yeah. 230, 240 pounds. They always dress the same, ball caps, and, and their face covered. And... Uh, they're breaking people's cameras. They're starting fights. They're just absolute scum. Well, Pittsburgh has been turned into a police state. I mean, it, the, the city is, is was a fortress, and this is a sign of things to come. Uh, this is important breaking news, so go ahead and roll with it, Alex. I'll no, 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 no. We're talking flu. That's more important. Just I'm going to cover this with Paul Watson briefly after you leave, get him to do a big report on it, because it's not enough to just show this. I'm going to get him to show the Denver stuff and everything else so people forget. So we want to r remind him. Uh, Tanya in Georgia, you're on the air with Mike Adams. Go ahead. Uh, hi, Alex and Mike. Um, I just want to let you know that I have an insert from uh, my local Walgreens. It's from the Novartis vaccines for the regular seasonal flu. It says 2009-2010 formula. And um, right in this document, it says it is um, that fluverin has not been evaluated for carcinogenic or mutagenic potential or for impairment of fertility. So Alex has been saying all along that they're putting sterilants in it, and it says right here, yeah, we are. This can make you fertile. Oh, yeah, look, look, I mean, it's come out with the IEDs and the vaccines, and they always know. They design it, and they, now, now explain what the fluverin is and this endroleukin 2 that they're adding, Mike Adams, but ma'am, I need to go to Walgreens. Every time I pull up an Internet site, it's Walgreens ads for the flu. I need to get their insert, but will you scan that and email it? Uh, to uh, writers at Infowars.com, or we'll put you on hold and give you a secret email. Will you scan that and send it to us? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd prefer to fax it if that's fine, and there's a lot of other information in here, too. They say they've been putting H1N1 H1N1 in the vaccine since 1977, 
and they have a long list of side effects that have been reported. This is a very informative. Uh, okay, insert. read it to us. Read it to us because I knew all this was in there, and I guess I haven't thought big genius because I'm not to to go out and get the insert. I mean, they admit in their literature online they're doing this. But Mike, were you aware of those uh, statements on the Norvitas uh, uh, statement? Yeah, absolutely. Those, but remember, those are the ones that are required by federal law. There are, there's a lot of information that's not required that they're withholding. So as she reads the list, keep in mind of what you're not hearing, too. Yeah, thanks for holding so long to tell us this, uh, uh, Marianne, or, or uh, what caller Tanya. is this? Tanya. <laughs> okay, Tanya, they just changed my list and it, it, it erased your name. Tanya in Georgia. Uh, Tanya, recap. I'm going to sit back. So is uh, Mike Adams. Read the cover sheet, what it says, and, and, and read us those parts. Well, it's, it's really, really long, so I'm just going to go through a few points that I was highlighting for you. Um, the first thing that I noticed is that it says, Fluverin has not been evaluated for carcinogenic or mutagenic potential or for impairment of fertility. And then later on where it's talking about who should and should not get the shot, it says nobody under the age of four. And it also says that it is also not known whether Fluverin can cause fetal harm when administered to a pregnant woman or can affect reproductive capacity. So and, and remember quite... that it's, it's the expectant mothers that are one of the groups being targeted for this virus, by the way. I just wanted to right. this, and this is regular. Right does it, this is just the regular seasonal flu, which hasn't been as controversial, so some of the pregnant women might not even be as scared of this one. And it also says in here that um, whoever's giving the vaccine is supposed to tell the person that they're giving the shot to the benefits and the risks. Now, I think if they told somebody, hey, this can make you sterile, you know, this has uh, theramarosol in it, which it also says it does, that, you know, people might not take it. And I don't think they're telling people that. How did you get the insert? You asked for it at Walgreens? Yeah, and let me tell you, it's funny. I walked into Walgreens and I said, what kind of... Uh, shot are you giving what company is it from and they didn't know and i said well do you have an insert and they said what and i go you know like a little paper that comes in with your shipment so she goes back and she's looking i'm assuming this is the pharmacist there was two women back there they're looking around they come back with this piece of paper they pulled out of the bottom of the box of vials all folded up very tiny unfold it right in front of me and say here let me start you know i'm looking at it and it's really long and, and i said can i just take this with me and they said oh yeah sure take it like they had no interest in it so I well this is important and, and, and i've read that this stuff's in there but but it, it, it's another thing to actually have the insert. I'm going to give you our facts. The problem is on those tiny, you know, it, it, regular size sheet of paper, they fold it up tiny to go in the vial, and it's tiny, tiny wording. I don't know if that'll fax, but you can try. I blew it up. Oh, you blew it up. It's 866-894-1767. That's 866-894-1767. Uh, will you go ahead and fax that to, uh, to us as soon as possible? Is there no way... That that because if you blew it up, can you scan it and and uh, email it to Watson? Because people need to see that that it talks about attacking your fertility and mutagens and cancer. Because the German news admits that German scientists are admitting that, but it's important. We could save a lot of lives showing people this. Eight six six eight nine four seventeen sixty seven. Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave my house right now and go fax it to you. But I had one other question for Mike. Um, also in this uh, insert, it says that it's very important that you shake the vial in between each dosage, and I'm wondering if, if they don't shake it, does that mean that you can get like an even higher amount of mercury than what they're saying? Yes, absolutely, and this, this is one of the reasons why you've got to be very careful if, if you even get a vaccine of where you get it, because many of the people administering these vaccines, especially in these retail outlets, they are properly shaking up the vaccine, which means you could get a concentration of the uh, thimerosal or other chemicals that's up to 200 times higher than what it's supposed to be. So your baby could get the one shot that's 200 times more toxic than the next baby that they actually shook the vial for. And that's one of the reasons why vaccines are so dangerous. The people given these shots are not following the rules, and they probably didn't even read the insert that you read. No, I think don't think they that. did read it. I don't think they did. I'm going to leave right now and go ahead and text this team and let you move on, but um, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware this was coming to you. You know, the reason that they include that language in that, in that insert, Alex, is so that if infertility problems become widespread, they can say, well, we warn you. You know, they can just disavow any responsibility. But then meanwhile, the nightly news says it doesn't sterilize you. Sure, the White House science czar says he wants to sterilize you through vaccines in your water, but that's okay. And then you read the insert, oh, it's going to might sterilize you. Well, that's okay. You know, the government's good people. These are good people. We ought to, you know, be sterilized. Uh, 
you know, I Go had, ahead. I had a, a reporter from a mainstream network news organization call me maybe two weeks ago, wanted to interview me about, about swine flu vaccine, obviously was looking for, you know, an alternative viewpoint. He swore to me up and down that he had been told by the drug companies themselves that there was no thimerosal used in any of the swine flu vaccine. And I, I tried to educate this reporter. I said, no, you're wrong. It, there's thimerosal in there. And he said, no, there isn't. It's not, it's not being used. And to this day, that network, which I don't want to name, but they've been reporting uh, stories on the swine flu vaccine and claiming there's no thimerosal in it. Even though I can pull up 100 releases from the medical companies admitting they put a higher dose of the Marisol in this one. 